Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and the start of a series of videos I'm going to call Bolt Action Basics. Now if you're familiar with the channel or have seen any of my previous videos, you'll probably know that I'm quite a massive Bolt Action fan. I'm always trying to get people interested or playing the game whenever I can. So what I thought I'd do is make a series of videos aimed at the new Bolt Action player or a gamer that's looking to get into Bolt Action um, very early on. Now hopefully these will provide a brief overview of the game mechanic for the new or aspiring Bolt Action gamer. But if you're a seasoned veteran Bolt Action general, I'd love to hear your feedback, ideas and suggestions as the Bolt Action community, it's filled with wonderful people. Uh, it's a fantastic front of knowledge and full of wisdom and sage advice. Now, I thought I would start off the series with something that is unique to each tabletop game out there, and that is actually how to build your army. Now, often the simplicity or complexity of army building can be the driving force behind whether a player chooses to get involved in that particular system, and I believe that Warlord Games has struck a great balance with the list building mechanics for Bolt Action. So in this video, I'm going to be building a 1,000 point army that I will outline the army books, theatre selectors, and how you actually just go about building your army. Now my aim here is simplicity and just outlining how these pieces fit together. What I'm not doing is, is, uh, is building an all-conquering, uh, all-game-winning uh, army. Uh, this is just an exercise in, in the army building mechanics only. Right, so right back to the beginning. You've decided to get into bolt action, and you may have decided already what nation will be your first army. Now aside from needing a copy of the bolt action rules, you'll also need to pick up your army book, which is unique to your chosen nation. Now, this book will provide you with unit options, national rules, historical background, and the theatre selectors. Now these selectors are central to how you actually construct your army. Now today, I'm going to be using the Armies of Germany book. This will come as no surprise to a lot of people that know me. <laughs> this provides me with all the units, points, costs, and different theatre selectors, which will determine what units I can or cannot take for that selector. Think of the selectors as different stages and campaigns of World War II. These will have different unit types and what you may be able to take in one selector, you may not be able to take in another. Now in building my army, I have opted for the Normandy 1944 selector from the Army of Germany book. Now let's imagine my opponent and I decided on a 1000 point game. I need to choose what, unit, what units I wish to take up to those 1000 points. Now looking at the selector, I can see that there are a number of mandatory units that I must take when building my army. Now for the Normandy 1944 selector, my mandatory units are a HQ and two sections of infantry. Once these have been added, I am free then to add any other choices I want as long as I don't exceed the 1000 points. So let's start right at the beginning of the build. So I decide that I want my army to be led by a first lieutenant. Now having looked at the HQ unit in the book, I can see that he's going to cost me 90 points. Now this is because I want him to be a veteran officer. I'm going to outline troop ratings in the next video, but essentially veteran troops are a bit more difficult to kill and will generally obey orders a bit more when the bullets and the shrapnel is flying about their ears. Now my first lieutenant can take assistance, so I've chosen to give him one assistant. And checking the book, I can see that he will cost 13 points as I want him to be a veteran also. So that is my HQ um, unit sorted for a total cost of 103 points. Now, as I mentioned before, I also need to add two infantry units to the platoon as another mandatory choice. Now, looking at the list in the book, there are a whole host of different troop choices I could take. But what I decide on is two sections of Falschermjäger. Again, this may not come as a surprise to many people that know, <laughs> know how I play bolt action. Now, I've taken these as two 10-man sections. I also want to run these as veteran uh, veteran troops. Now, at this stage, they're just all armed with rifles, but now we can go in and start um, giving them different different weapon uh, options and different, different weapon choices. So anyone that knows me knows that I like my, um, my infantry sections to be full of firepower. So what I decide to do is add uh, two light machine guns. Um, in addition to this, I also decided to give the NCO an assault rifle. Now, these options aren't free, and the more options you add, the more points you will need to spend to add these options to your units. Now, each of, I've, I've armed each of these units identically, so that each, each section comes to 185 points, which is 370 points for, each, for uh, the total of the two sections, 
if we factor in the, the HQ unit um, cost as well, I've now, I've now spent 473 points. Now that these, these mandatory, choices, mandatory choices have been added, it's time to add some more units and some support options. Now when playing bolt action, I always like to focus on infantry sections. These are the boots on the ground, and these guys will be the ones doing the fighting, taking objectives, defending objectives, and being engaged in a, a whole host of other different missions during the game. So I always like to take at least three. So at this stage, what I choose to do is add a third infantry section, which is this. Now this is a 10-man section of Waffen SS. I also choose, I've taken them as a, um, as veteran also, um, just to go with the rest of the, the infantry options so far. And just like the, the Faustmaker, what I decided to do is add two light machine gun teams to this one section. Now, if we add those, the light machine gun options to the, the base total, or the base cost of the veteran 10-man section, these come in at 150 points. So when we add this to what we've already spent, that's 623 points already spent. So with my initial infantry options sorted, it's now, to move, now time to move on to other options. At this stage, I decided I want to add some long range fire support to the platoon to provide some covering fire as these guys advance. Now, again, having consulted my armies of Germany book, I can see that I've got quite a few options to fulfill a specific role. Now, for my first choice, I decide to add a medium machine gun team. Uh, now, rather than take this as a veteran unit, I decided to take this as a, as a regular um, and I pay the 50 points to take this as a regular troop choice. Now, there are no other options to add at this stage, so by paying the 50 points, that's that option sorted. But I also want to continue the, the, the long range um, support options at this stage. So I decided to add a mortar team. Now, looking through the book, I can see that I've, I've got three options here. I can take a, a light mortar, a medium mortar, or a heavy mortar. So I decide to take a a medium mortar, but I also decided to take a spotter with it. Now what a spotter will do, it will enable the, the mortar to fire at targets it can't see. Now I also decided to take the mortar as a, another regular unit and pay the 10 points for the spotter. So in adding them together, that's 50 points for the medium machine gun and 60 points for the medium mortar. Add it all together, which means we've now spent 733 points altogether on the army so far. This leaves us 267 points left to get us to the 1,000 points. So at this stage, my, my attention turns to adding some anti-tank options to the platoon. Now this will allow me to counter any tanks or any other armored vehicles that my opponent may wish to bring to the battle. I've got two, two options in mind. So we'll look at the book and check the points cost and see how I'll be able to fit this into the army as it is so far. Now my first choice is a Panzer Shrek team. Now often the sight, the mere sight of one of these is often enough to make a, a tank change its mind. Now I decided to take this as a, a veteran. Uh, this is to give it a bit more survivability as it's a, a small team uh, and can be quite vulnerable. So to give it a bit more survivability, I, I take it as a veteran. Now it's quite pricey, comes in 104 points, but I'm prepared to pay the points to have the unit in my army. And with those 104 points spent, I decided I want to add a second anti-tank option to the army as well. And what I choose to do is add this, which is a Pack 40 anti-tank gun. I decided to take this as a regular uh, troop choice rather than a veteran, and so I paid 110 points to take this as a um, as a regular troop choice. Now this leaves me with 50, 53 points left. So the next unit I add is a sniper. Now I've not got enough points to take him as a, re as a veteran sniper, so I take him as a regular sniper, but he will be help, ha handy during the, the, the game in targeting officers, spotters, and other, other kind of high value targets that my, my, uh, my opponent may have. In adding the, vet, uh, the, the regular sniper, this leaves me with three points. Now, ordinarily you can't really get a lot for three points, but I do like to spend all my points where possible. So I take these three points and I upgrade the, um, the NCO in the Waffen SS section to replace his rifle with an SMG. Now with those three points spent, that's the full 1,000 points spent, and I have my fully completed army, just like that. Now the final step would be to add a, an order dice or a, a some kind of chit or counter to each unit, but this will be covered in the next video, where we, go, we look at um, in more detail about how we assign orders to each unit, and also about troop ratings, and how these work during a game of bolt action. 
I hope you found that short video on um, bolt action the army building helpful or interesting. If you've got any comments or questions about it, uh, about army building or uh, in bolt action in general, just leave them down below in the comments section and I'll certainly respond to all comments and, set, um, comments and questions. But as always, thanks for watching. Do take care, may your dice roll well, and I will catch you all in the next video. So, bye-bye for now.